What's going on, everybody? January 3rd, Wednesday. Huge slate. It's been a while since we've had a big one. 12 games. Um, interesting value out there in some of these spots. Um, I'm excited. These five game slates and the holidays have lulled everything, but this is going to be a big one. This is going to separate uh, the men from the boys, so to speak. Let's just get into it. First game up, <clears throat> Magic and Rockets, and it's probably the most interesting game on the slate in that no James Harden. What happens? First, we'll start with the Magic. Uh, Magic, 107.25 implied total. Uh, tied for eighth on the night. It's pretty good. Let's grab everything else here. Anxious to see this team without Harden. I would assume Chris Paul is going to be owned out the wazoo. Yeah, speaking of, switch this to Rockets and then we can take a look at some Wowie. Okay, this is going to be a long video, guys, so brace yourselves. 12 games. I'm going to be here for a minute. Why am I looking at the damn rockets? See, uh, already out of the gate, I'm just wrong. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. Yeah, this is going to be uh, there's going to be a lot owned in this one, I think. There we go. So for the magic, I'm gonna look at Aaron Gordon. I mean, all I'm looking at the main five: Gordon, Payton, Fournier. I think Biombo is in an okay spot. Simmons as well. We need to think about it a little bit. So Orlando, a slow start, guys. My bad. There's too much going on. Okay, so Orlando definitely has better pricing on DK right now. Sorry. Gordon is 8,000 on FanDuel, 7,800 on DK. So maybe everybody but Gordon. Feels like a good spot for him. A pace up game for them. You know, no Harden is going to, you know, they're going to be off a little bit. So I'm fine with him on both sides. And I've added a tier. Um, I've been having trouble, like, keeping my shortlist thoughts in my head. So. I'm going to rank everybody that I do in probably three or four tiers, one being the best, and then further down. Um, so one are guys that I'm going to have in, like, almost all of my lineups. You know, just love them regardless. As we work our way down, it's more, like, situational or, you know, this is just because of salary. It's not that I love the matchup type stuff. So, like, Gordon, for instance, I'm not wild about it. I think it's a perfectly acceptable play. Um, it's a good matchup, so he would be like a tier three guy for me. And I'll show you how that shakes out once I finish here. Alfred Payton, 8,000 on FanDuel, 6,900 on DK. I understand that he's going to be getting a lot of Chris Paul, um, but if Chris Paul is going to have to play minutes, he's not going to be able to invest himself defensively at least I think, you know, the way that they're going to need him to. Um, so I actually like, I like Peyton a lot here. Uh, he would be a two for me. Fournier. Hmm. What does he need? 63 on FanDuel, 6,000 on DK, so like mid-30s. He's had, you know, two mid-30s games since he's been back and two stinkers. <sighs> I 
This one's tricky because I feel like I should have a little bit of him. Biombo, 6,700 on FanDuel, 5,600 on DK. Um, so I don't think that I would want any part of him on FanDuel. So I'm going to say I would want him on DK. And he needs 33.5 for 6x on DK. You know, he's had four straight 30 point games. Um,. I'm not like super worried about Capella or anything in that sense, so I actually like him a lot, especially with Peyton. And then Jonathan Simmons is probably the the lowest guy on the totem pole, although the salary again is great on DK. It's weird. I actually I honestly like all five of these guys in this particular case just because of the game situation, the total you know, the way that these guys are getting minutes. The Rockets aren't super prohibitive on anything um, outside of, like, long mid-range shots, which is kind of weird. You would expect them to give up a bunch of long mid-range shots given their, their particular strategies. So Simmons would need 33. He's the only guy I'm wary about because he just hasn't been playing very well. If I take a look at Simmons here <clears throat> like that is a crater in performance he had been playing really really well up until you know the mid-December mark and then he has just fallen off a cliff five straight games at around you know 0.66 points per minute um, even the you know, like he's just Simmons is the guy I'm going to leave out. So you'll see when I refresh this. They might not be in the right order. Yeah, they're not. Um, so like people will be ranked via where they are in the particular shortlist. And then, um, you know, guys that aren't in the shortlist at all. So I'm going to figure out a way to get make this a little bit more available for everyone. But I think the tiers will really help me when it comes to uh, looking at ownership percentages and my um, my exposure rates. So now from there, we're going to Houston, and this is the big one. And I won't be spending this kind of time on every game. Like, how much do we need to talk about Heat, Pistons, the two worst implied totals on the night? Not as much. Especially with Avery Bradley back. Uh, so to the Rockets. And I haven't even looked at this yet, so I'm excited. I've got the with or without you stuff ready, and I, I added that as a tab in the sheet. Um, I want to see who benefits the most from Harden being off the floor. And it's also something we're going to take a look at for Philly, <clears throat> dispel some rumors of uh, Ben Simmons that I've probably been eschewing. So, Rockets. Not the best matchup. Magic like to limit threes. They'll give up shots in the mid-range, which is generally a very good thing for Chris Paul. Um, they really do limit the threes, so I do want to be conscious of that. People are going to be all over Eric Gordon tonight. So let's take this look now. I have the Sixer stuff in there. I haven't cleaned up this sheet yet. So what I'm doing now, I'm on NBAWowie.com. I want to see how everybody's done so far this year with Harden on the floor. And I go to the Fantasy tab. They already have this calculated out. And this is this is legit. This is every single lineup permutation. So you, you're getting legitimate performance of guys on and off the floor. So obviously Harden, this is every, Harden's played 1,236 minutes. Every minute is accounted for for every possible combination. So then when I swap it out, this is every time they've been playing and Harden has not been on the floor. So how do they play without Harden? So perfect example, Eric Gordon in the 328 minutes he has played without James Harden scores 
DK points per minute. When Harden is on the floor, it's 0.76. So he goes up 0.32 fantasy points. That's a giant increase. That's what? 30% increase in um, his output. So if you thought he was going to score, let's say 30 points per minute, or 30 points, you know, for the night. Um, you know, I mean, that could be like 32, 33. That's a giant swing. Or 35, 36. It's even higher than that in, in a way. Big boost for P.J. Tucker. Very little change for Ariza, which is interesting. Um, that's something to pay attention to. There hasn't been, you know, granted, these are small sample sizes, 218. I could probably swing back and look at last year and add a little bit for Ariza. But, you know, very little change for Ariza. So that makes me want to say he'll be the guy that I'll ignore. Um, obviously, huge boost for Paul. Smaller boost for Capella, which makes sense to me. Um, you know, Capella, it's not like Capella's creating his own offense. He's going to rely on better guys to give him the ball. I do think it's interesting that Ryan Anderson takes on so much of a scoring load. I wouldn't have expected that to be such a huge leap. I would have thought that Harden being on the floor on a per-minute basis would have been okay for him, but he goes from 0.68 DK points to 1.06. That's a huge jump. So with that said, um, that's sort of what I'm going to try to be looking at now in these, um, in these matchups with like major players being out. So first up is Paul, 9,900 on FanDuel, 9,600 on DK. I mean, <laughs> Chris Paul scoring two points per minute in the 187 minutes without James Harden. They're the number one total on the board. Chris Paul is going to be relatively chalky. I don't see a scenario where you can actually fade him. Um, so I love Chris Paul. I love him on both sites, and uh, he's a he's a very high priority for me. So he's a tier one guy. Uh, next up is Capella, seventy seven hundred on Fanduel, seventy four hundred on DK. He's the first guy where I'm not like super over the moon about it. He's good. Um, I don't. I don't have too much of an issue. He's been he's been amazing this year in like from an efficiency standpoint. Um, he needs to get to like forty for value, which is a healthy ask. Twenty five in the last one, but he, he just some of these games that he plays he just goes bananas. Um, I like him. I'm not. He's not like a major major priority for me on this slate. Um, so he'd be like a three guy. Uh, Eric Gordon. Now, this is the one we want to pay attention to the most. 6,600 on FanDuel, 6,800 on DK. I would expect people to be thinking, okay, if Harden's out, Gordon's role is going to really increase. I, I think that it is. Um, you know, I've got him at 35 minutes. So, 35 minutes at 1.08 would be 37.8 fantasy points. Um, that, that would be at the rate that he had been scoring them. Um, yeah, I don't, he's not just going to immediately always do that. Chris Paul's not going to play it two points per minute without him either. Um, you know, they all have matchups to take into consideration, but I'm not going to be overexposed to Eric Gordon. Uh, I don't think this game fits him very well. And while he does take that boost, he needs to get to high 30s he's had two stinkers lately he can get into those 30s section i don't think that he's a bad play but he is not one of the guys that i'm focused on uh, much like capella uh, it's a three for me i'm going to avoid trevor ariza in this case just because of what we just saw um that feels like a f again he can do he he can do big things in, in this um, situation, but why risk it? He hasn't been as productive, like he hasn't been crazy productive without him. I am going to look at Ryan Anderson though. I know that the 
magic 10 to lower threes, but that boost to him, going from 0.68 to over a point per possession, I mean, that's real, I think. So 4,300 on FanDuel, 4,600 on DK, which is kind of a bummer. Um, but if he can get into the mid-20s, like, you know, he's here right now. But he has the ability to just go bananas. So I'm going to have a decent amount of Ryan Anderson here. He'd be a two for me. Now if I go back and look at just, this is the DK one, but it's going to be the same sort of situation on both. Um, that's really going to help as I'm paying attention to my exposures. Okay, so that game obviously took a little bit longer than we would have liked, but... You know, I'm looking at some new things, and uh, that's a really important game with Harden out. So next up, is Sixers Spurs. We're gonna do it all again. No Embiid. Um, so Sixers 103.5 implied total, 17th on the day. Um, oh, I think I made this lineup, but it's not gonna move too much from that. Like I said, no Embiid, so that's something to consider. Rashawn Holmes is actually going to play. Brett Brown. I don't know what you're doing, buddy. Spurs on the back-to-back. -back. So no Kawhi. Uh, Kawhi was amazing in limited minutes last night. No surprise there. He is amazing. Okay, so first thing up here. I don't love Ben Simmons' price. Um, but I'm okay. Like, I don't, I don't totally love Sar. Like, this is just on the surface. I don't totally love Sarich, but it's okay. Um, I definitely want to look at Covington, although it's not the best shooting matchup for him. We do want to look at Redick, and that's probably it. I need to find a way to remove some of these guys from, um, the cleaning the glass stuff. I should do it if the opponent doesn't match I should blank that out yeah let me make that note blank CTG when different opponent guys like Bledsoe or Stauskas is not in this matchup but he shows up here because of being on the Sixers previously so I just looked at this uh, right before I got on here and I thought that it was super interesting, so we'll take a look at it again. So this is Embiid on the court. And again, this is just this year, so you know, limited samples, obviously. So Embiid on, and now Embiid off. It's really interesting stuff, too. Here's the big takeaway. Let's do uh, Ben Simmons, 1.17 fantasy points with Embiid off, 1.15 with him on. It's very little change. There, there's not a ton swaying Ben Simmons, but guys like Amir Johnson, much more. Um, much better performance. Uh, you see a big boost to Sarich, a big boost to Covington. Um, can I? Doing a lot on the fly here, but that's what happens when you're thinking out loud. Some of this isn't going to match because of stupid, stupid naming conventions, but what are you going to do? So, like, I've got him at. TLC, but whatever. So I've got Covington at 33 minutes, which would be 33 fantasy points, you know, based on that rate. I mean, that's a big change compared to 0.86. So we do want to look at Covington and Sarich. I didn't like the price for Simmons before. I don't like it anymore after seeing this data. You know, we need to look at Amir, obviously, um, but he's only played 18 minutes with Embiid, so you, you know, mileage may vary. 
this number is fine, but um, it's hard to look at it too much as a difference maker. You know, there's not a lot of balance between the two. Basically, everybody gets a, a, a similar size boost. Amir goes through the roof, and Ben Simmons sees very little impact from it. These are things that you just want to look at. Extra, extra stuff. So I'm good on Ben Simmons. 8,600 on FanDuel. 8,800 on DK. Uh, it's just not a good price. Saric is 7,000 on FanDuel. 6,800 on DK. Can you get to 35 plus? Um, he's got three straight games in the 40s. I'm totally cool with seeing if that continues. I think it's a good price for him. Um, I'm not going to go wild about it. I can, I'd can. i like to have a couple lineups. I don't think that he is some crazy value, so he would just be a three for me. Covington, 6,100 on FanDuel, 57 on DK. So he needs like mid to low 30s. He's had a couple stinkers and a couple big games. So, again, I don't feel terribly comfortable with it. It's not the best game. They're obviously playing the Spurs. But he does benefit in a big way him being out. So, you know, having him in a lineup or two is totally reasonable. But I'm, they're not guys that I'm going crazy over. And this will get all hashed out. So I'll put this all together. I'll run everything through the optimizer, see guys that pop out that I ignored, see the balance between all of them. If I run this again, you know, Covington comes up zero times, I'm not going to force it. I'm just going to remove him. You know, there's a reason he won't be there at that point. I don't want to force optimization either. Redick, 5,400 on both. So he needs 30. That's a lot for Redick. I know he gets the boost with Embiid out, but at the same time, he's going to have to like live in the mid-range. The price isn't good enough that it's a no-brainer for me. I'm going to leave Redick off. Actually, no, because I don't dislike it, but he's, he's low on the totem pole for me. And then Holmes is 4,100 on FanDuel, 4,800 on DK. Um, I only want him on FanDuel. And <clears throat> I have him playing 20 minutes, which would be at his current rate without Embiid. That would be like 21 or 22 points. Standard with my projections even just in general. Um, so he's nothing crazy. He's not a crazy value right now. Amir, 3,600 on FanDuel, 4,100 on DK. Um, I don't want him on DK, but if you want to use a mirror as a punt on FanDuel, I get it. Shortlist is going to be giant now with the tiers. Um, but I hope that it gives you sort of an idea of how of my preference for guys. And I'll find a way to get this onto the website so people can see it. Now, <clears throat> to the Spurs, which, you know, who cares? Uh, Spurs, 106 implied total, which is 12th on the day. No, most likely no Danny Green. Um, and then no Kawhi. And it's the Spurs. I mean, if you've got a handle on their minutes for some of these guys, good for you. I certainly don't. We're going to want to look at the guys that live in the mid-range. Holy balls. LaMarcus Aldridge looks incredible tonight. So does Kyle Anderson. So does Powell, for that matter. I'm not the biggest Tony Parker fan. I don't I wouldn't, really wouldn't go any lower than that unless you're taking bets on like guys getting extra minutes. So for the Spurs, Aldridge 8400 on FanDuel, 7600 on DK. I love it so much. So he needs like just, you know, anywhere over 40 really is like is a solid outcome. He's had 5 of his last one, two, three, four of his last five have been over 40. They've been low over 40, but this is a good spot, I think. Um, 
I really, really like him on DK. Just because of that $7,600 price tag. Um, I wish they had a little bit more pace. And I wish they weren't the Spurs. Aldridge is a tier 2 guy for me, though. I want to have a good bit of him. Gasol is 6,000 on FanDuel and 6,800 on DK. That's a... God. That's a giant price swing. So, he is a monster on FanDuel tonight. I don't I don't want him on DK. Um, and he's probably a tier 2 guy on FanDuel because of that price. The last guy I'm going to look at is Kyle Anderson. 4,900 on FanDuel, 5,300 on DK. So, meh. Um, he needs high 20s to 30s, depending. You know, he's been in that area. The games without Kawhi, 27.6. That's not the best game there. But, you know, gets into the mid to high 20s without Kawhi. So, I'm comfortable there. I think that uh, I'm not like super duper comfortable with anything there. So he's a three for me. Might be a two on FanDuel. Let's move on. Wizards and Knicks. Wizards 109.25 implied total. That would be sixth on the night. No interesting Wizards stuff. So we don't need to wowie it out. The plan is to go live tonight, um, but we are supposed to get a storm, um, potentially one to three inches of snow, which I think I've only had snow in Wilmington twice, maybe three times in the eight plus years that I've been here. So it's pretty rare. Um, so who knows if I have power. Alrighty, wizards. Everybody kind of shoots threes at the same rate. You think about Beal and, I mean, in the same proportion, at least. You think about Beal and Wall and Porter and Oubre and Markeith and Mike Scott. They all shoot about a third of their shots from three. I don't love how much they shoot in the mid-range. Knicks really do a good job of stopping that, which is so weird considering. Well, it's not weird. That's they're doing it wrong, so that makes total sense. It, this might just be a situation where they really get a chance to do what they do best and bomb some threes. Hard to disregard anybody here, especially with that sixth implied total. So let's dig into the numbers. Wall, 9,500 on FanDuel, 8,700 on DK. We need him to get to 50. He has a 50-point game in his most recent. He's had two in his last four, although in one of those games, he's also had 25 fantasy points, which is brutal. Now He's going to get a lot of Jarrett Jack. Frankie Smokes played minimal minutes last night, much to my chagrin. So the more minutes that... I could actually see Nilakina having to play more tonight because Jarrett Jack, without question, is not going to be able to hang with John Wall. Nilakina can guard him as, as much as like anybody can guard him, but Nilakina's good on D. He might see increased minutes because of that. The gears are working here. I would not touch John Wall on FanDuel. Um, I don't even super love this on DK. But got to look at it a little bit. He has that 50-point potential for sure, especially against the Knicks, especially in a home game. Beal is 8,400 and 7,700, so he needs mid-40s. Put up 67 in the last one. Two other 40-point games in his last three, or at last four. I kind of feel the same way about Beal as I do about Wall. I get it. I can understand having like a smattering of him. Um, they're not jumping off the page. I think there's going to be better values out there. There's, it's not a hate 
play tonight because the matchup is good, but it's more of a play against their price. Um, it's not the best value. Otto Porter, 6,900 and 6,600, so he needs high 30s. He's been low. I mean, he's one big game, and that's basically it. He's the guy I'm interested in the least. Fantasy Country seems to like him a lot. I don't understand why. I don't really have any interest in Otto Porter, even though he's going to be probably someone that pops a lot on an optimizer. I don't get it. Has been playing better this year. He needs to get to too high of a number. Like in his last, f I mean, I guess the minimal minutes is a way to look at it here, but like low 30s, you're not, I'm not stoked if he hits 33. That's not enough for me. He hasn't shown enough upside. Um, Markeef or Mike Scott, I mean, you're rolling the dice there. Those aren't dice that I want to roll. And then Gortat, 4,100 on FanDuel. 4,700 on DK. He needs, you know, somewhere in the 20s. Uh, he has been not very good in five of his last seven. But in two of those games, monsters, 35 plus. So you can't totally ignore him, but he's a FanDuel guy for me. Uh, not the best play in the world. And he's in a situation where I would assume you would want Cantor to play more for Gortat. But he's been getting less and less minutes. Man, this is going to be a long-ass video. To the Knicks we go. Knicks, 22nd implied total, 100.75. Uh, I don't get the sense that I'm going to love a ton here. Frankie Smokes crushed me last night. I, I didn't see that. I didn't see him getting those minutes last night. That's depressing. All right. Um, from a shooting profile standpoint, not much of this matters. So we like Zinger. I'll look at Lee. I'm going to have to ignore Nilakina, although I could see him playing more minutes because of this particular matchup. I don't think I'm going to want much of anything here for the Knicks nor should anyone. Porzingis is 9,200 on FanDuel. He is 8,200 on DK. So he needs mid to high 40s. Not the best game last night, so that's not going to be a great barometer. 27 fantasy points last night, but coming off of four, five straight 44-point 44, 44 games or higher. Um... So I have to take a look at Chris Dapp's Porzingis. I don't want Cantor with the minimal minutes. Um, Courtney Lee, 5,700 and 5,200. He would need to get to like 30 for me to be super happy. He's got a really high floor, not the highest ceiling in the world. I don't mind it, but he's a low tier guy. Um, I don't ever get Beasley right. 5,300 on Fandle, 4,800 on DK. I mean, you can get 33.8 fantasy points in 26 minutes, Beasley. You can get 15 minute Beasley or 13 minute Beasley. Or you can get 50 point Beasley. It's. There's no telling anymore. Um, his price on DK is really nice. Mid 20s is a. F Look. You're not rostering Michael Beasley thinking he's going to get 45 minutes or something here tonight, but he's worth a flyer. And Jarrett Jack, 4,700 and 4,300. He needs mid-20s or higher. 
I mean, if he gets the minutes, he's there. I'm worried about the matchup, so that's, I'm going to fade there. I won't cry too much over fading Jared Jack. Next up, that's, we're done for the 7 o'clock games on to 7.30. Brooklyn Nets hosting the Minnesota Timberwolves. Nets, 103.75 implied total, 16th on the night. No Karis Levert tonight. Um, so expect a little bit more Stauskas. And the assumption is that Okafor is going to get some minutes. So interesting to see there. I don't think he's playable. I don't think he's going to get like 30 minutes or anything crazy, but something to keep in mind for the bigs. Okay, not a huge, not a great matchup for Rondé Hollis Jefferson, but the backcourt all is going to look okay because of the way of having to fill um Karis Levert's minutes so we want to look at Dinwiddie, Crab, Harris, and Stauskas and you know let's uh let's wow it that's what this is for this is a terrible example because the Nets suck but Levert plays a lot of minutes so it's possible that something pops out of this in an interesting way We'll grab everything that Karis Levert does, and then we'll check the opposite. I hope somebody stands out, and this is just like a really cool thing to look at for today. Alrighty, so let's um, change that formatting. One of these days I'll actually just prepare, you know? Okay. So that's a decent boost to Carol. It's a decent boost to Crab. Crab's just not very good, which is kind of crazy. Um, this almost hurts more people. Dinwiddie's not super duper amazing without him. Small boosts, small boosts across the board, but we'd be remiss to not take a closer look at Carol Crab, Dinwiddie, maybe Joe Harris. Um, and the key takeaway here, you know, we don't want to get too crazy. Brooklyn has a lower tier. Um, projected total so we're not going to make our bones stack in the nets tonight i mean could but ronde hollis jefferson 7200 on FanDuel, 6500 on dk he's going to need to get to the high 30s because of his price on dk um i don't want to completely disregard him especially because minnesota is not exactly the best defensive team but I don't expect to have any on Rondé Hollis Jefferson. If he pops completely, um, you know, I might have a lineup with him. But he's, he's low on the totem pole for me. Rondé. Dinwiddie, 6,500 on FanDuel, 6,100 on DK. He needs mid-30s for value not been there in a hot minute i don't mind it though i think that's a really good price in a good situation not too crazy though damari carroll 5300 on fanduel 4900 on dk he might not be playable he needs you know close to 30 Got it in the last one, but lots of stinkers there. Um, I'm going to pass because of the price. Alan Crabb, though, 5,300 on FanDuel, 4,400 on DK. If he can get to the mid-20s or higher, which he has in the last two, he does see that little bit of a boost with uh, Levert being out. So I think Alan Crabb is the guy that I would focus on. I would not... Go after him on FanDuel. This is a DK only thing for me. And he's actually a two. I think there's a lot of value in Alan Crabb. Um, I don't necessarily trust 
Joe Harris or Stauskas all that much. And I don't know which one is going to get sort of the major minutes boost. You would expect it to be... You would expect Stauskas to have the biggest benefit here from a minutes perspective, but I'm going to ignore them both. Now we'll go to Minnesota. Um, this should be a little bit more interesting. Minnesota 110.25 implied total, fourth on the night. Um, so let's scope that out. Love these 12 game slates. There's just so much to look at. So many pieces of a puzzle to fit together. So many unique lineups. Okay. So Jimmy Butler is incredible. He might be my new favorite play of the day if something changes here. Towns is good. Uh, I'm going to take a peek at Wiggins. Only guy that I probably. Man, I, I think I like everybody. I do want to see the Wowie with uh, Teague out. I know he's been out for a while, and he's going to be out for a while, but it's interesting, you know? I haven't really thought about how everybody's been playing without Teague. This is the, the perils of NBA Wowie sometimes. A little slow. I don't really have the patience. How many people can be on here right now doing this? So there we go. That's one. That's Teague on. So many dudes play for Brooklyn. It's ridiculous. Now, Teague off. I'm anxious to see how much Tyus Jones goes bananas. Although I guess he should, he probably doesn't. Wouldn't even shock me if it went down. Well, we're gonna see how dumb I am. Okay, so Tyus Jones. I mean, he pretty much doesn't play without. Okay, that makes sense. He only played seven minutes with Teague. That makes sense. So we want to look at. Towns has played, it, there's no impact to Towns, whether it's Teague or Jones. Wiggins sees the biggest boost, and then it's a small one for Butler. Tyus Jones just benefits by playing. It's not so much that he benefits because Teague is out. Gorgie Zhang, but that seems like a weird one. So... Towns is 9,800 and 9,400. We need him to get to low 50s. I don't see a reason why he can't do that, um, but I don't love it. And I, I, don't, I think I touched on it earlier. Um, we're going to see more people in the shortlist because of me ranking these guys by tiers. Um, but really, the chances of me having... You know, more than one or two lineups of a guy that's a four tier is very low. They're going to be very, very low owned for me. Um, so keep that in mind when you see this because you're going to be like, oh, this dude likes everybody. It's not really the case. It's ones and twos are so much higher than everybody else. It's insane. And uh, that's sort of the main takeaway. It's, this is more a visual exercise for myself than sort of putting the tier system out there. Butler, 9,500 on FanDuel, 8,600 on DK. Ooh, Jimmy. He needs, let's say 50 for Butler. Hit it in the last one, 48 and 27 minutes in the one before that. He's had multiple 45-plus point games in the last week or so. I'm in, um, and I think I'm going to have a lot of Jimmy Butler. Wiggins, 5,800 and 6,100. Um, yeah, finally broke out of a bit of a slump on the on New Year's Day when I said I'm not playing Jimmy Butler, or I'm not playing Andrew Wiggins, and he went crazy. Not the only guy to do it on that day. Other than that, it's just been straight 20-point games for Wiggins. Uh, matchup is good, though. 
would be remiss to say that. I don't really want him on DK at that price, but on FanDuel, that's a crazy value. Um... getting a phone call hold on one second gotta get that exterminator man I really don't have any interest in Wiggins on DK but he looks really good on FanDuel so he's a three for me I don't want to have a ton of him um, Tyus though 6400 on FanDuel 5,400 on DK. Um, that's awesome value for him there. So he needs to get to like low 30s. Hasn't done it in the last two, but did do it in uh, one of the games without Teague. I think it's the last time you're going to be able to play him like this on DK. So for me, he's a DK only play. And uh, he's not a super high tier guy, but I like him anyway. Now on to the next game, which would be, I don't know, Heat and Pistons. Oh, should I skip it? Heat, 99.75 implied total, 23rd. Only team worse than them is the team that they're playing. Avery Bradley is back. Woo. I, I really hope that nothing looks even remotely close to okay here. Somebody's back for the heat, too. James Johnson, I think. All right. All right, I'll look at Tobias Harris. And I'll look at Drummond, I guess. That's probably it. Drummond, 10,000 on FanDuel. I will pass immediately on that. 9,100 on DK. I don't think that I give a shit about that either. Just need to look to see which one of these guys owns the other one, if that is the case. Drummond against the Heat. Okay, so Drummond eight against the Heat last year. But that was at a 7,500 price, not 9,000 on DK. What about Whiteside? Not good for Whiteside in the past. Okay, so Drummond becomes just a tier four guy. That's it. Um, just because of his performance against him in the past. Tobias Harris, 6,800 and 6,400. He'll need mid to high 30s. I'm going to make my bet elsewhere, and I'm going to ignore the rest of this game. Um, so now we're hopping to the Heat. Wait, why did I do that in reverse? So that's Detroit against Detroit. So let's flip that. Anything change for me there? I'm still fine with a little bit of Drummond, but he's just kind of prohibitively expensive. Nobody looks in much better than that. Ish at 5,900 is too expensive. Yeah, I'm okay. Not the game for me. Um, so now let's change that to the Pistons. We'll take a look at the Heat. Uh, like I said, James Johnson back, apparently. No waiters still, no Winslow. So, whatever. Okay, I'll look at Tyler Johnson. I'll look at Wayne. I should look at Whiteside, but I probably won't. Whiteside is 80. Okay, so I got to look at him in DK. 8,300 on FanDuel, 6,600 on DK, which is just a gigantic difference. <laughs> um, he needs 41, uh, let's just say 40, I guess. 
Two straight 30 point games. Ooh. I can't disregard Whiteside full stop on DK, but he's a low guy for me. Unless you know he's going to be playing crazy minutes. Uh, maybe I'll make him a three. That price is crazy. Josh Richardson, 6,400 and 6,300. I will pass. Only guy I want to look at is Tyler Johnson, 6,100 on FanDuel, 5,600 on DK. He needs mid to high 30s. Um, can get there. I don't mind having a little bit of him. Again, he's probably a three for me. And Ellington is just too expensive. Next up, Celtics and Cavs. Uh, this is a game that is much more interesting um, for just from a basketball standpoint than it is from a fantasy standpoint. Celtic, uh, there's no line right now. I've got the Celtics favored by four at home. That might be a little high, but we'll see. Um, no Isaiah Thomas, who looked uh, good last night. We'll take a look at the Celts. Uh, Semi is supposed to play. All right, we want to look at Jason Tatum. We want to look at Jalen Brown. The only guy I don't really want to look at is Marcus Smart. Kyrie, 9,000 fan duel, 8,500 on DK. Coming back to Cleveland, you know, throw out the first game. Uh, nothing, you can't use that first game as a reference for anything. After uh, Gordon Hayward got hurt, it changed the entire complexion of the game and the just the vibe of the game. I was watching it at the time live. Um, even I didn't want to keep watching the game. I can't imagine how bad they didn't want to keep playing it. So I'm not going to use that as like a reference point at all. We need Kyrie to get 45 plus against his old team in Boston. He's certainly going to try. I would expect him to be chalky. I don't see any reason why he can't have a big game. They don't exactly have that sort of stopper for him. It's not Calderon or JR or anybody really. So clearly Kyrie is worth a look. Um, I don't think he's worth a crazy big look though. Wouldn't shock me if he went absolutely bananas. He's one of the best players in the NBA. Horford is 7,500 and 7,100. So he needs, man, like 40. Um, it just seems like a, a big game for him. I don't, that's not really a place for me. I'm, you know, total's 10th, so it's mid-tier. Jason Tatum, though. 5,700 on FanDuel, 5,700 on DK. Can he get over 30? Had a terrible game in his last one out, but you know, back-to-back 30-point -back games before that. Three 30-point games in the last two weeks. Um, I'm hoping that he plays well again. But again, he's sort of a lower-tier guy. Decent value, though. Brown, 5,600 and 5,300. He also needs to get to 30. I'm not going to go crazy for that one. So that's probably it for me. We'll go to Cleveland now. I'm excited to see the Cavs here. Might be a bad copy. Damn. I'm um, digging LeBron and maybe Wade, and that's probably it. LeBron is 11 5 and 11 3, so you know, we, we all know that he needs 60s. How's he been playing? 50 50, 60, 30, 60, 60. So, great spot. Um,. Not great spot. Not the best matchup, obviously. Celtics a little bit better on D. But 
huge game for Braun in Boston. It'd be silly to just ignore him. Um, I don't need a ton of him. If the matchup were better, I'd like it a little bit more. But, you know, Marcus Morris is a big body for him. Guards him well, or at least tries to. Love is 8,000 on both. Uh, you know, he needs 40-something. That's not, I don't think it's the best spot. Wade is ultra competitive, so I can see this being a decent Wade game, especially with no Thomas. He's 4,900 and 4,700. Can he get to the high 20s? Um, he had 29 last night in 18 minutes. Um, let's see. And he doesn't really play back-to-backs or hasn't had to in a while. I'm okay with Wade. Keep an eye on it. Who knows if he plays. That's it for me in that game. Like I said, we're going to start uh, picking up some pace. Bulls hosting the Raptors. Raptors, five-point favorites in Chicago. Bulls with a 105 implied total, which is 13th. Um, how is it 1030 already? Jesus. Cut that out. All right, let's grab the Bulls. Oh, that didn't work. Chris Dunn, that's pro, probably it. I don't like this one at all. Dunn is 8,600, so he needs 40 to be looking good. I don't have a problem there. Nothing jumps off the page, though. be a three for me. Uh, I definitely don't want Miritich. Markin in 5,400 and 5,700. He needs like 30 plus. Um, it's okay, but the Raptors on D just take away the things that he likes. I'm going to ignore that. Holiday, sort of the same scenario. 56 and 4. 5,000 even, so he needs 30. You know, he's got a sprinkling of that, but again, just a horrible matchup for him. I'd be forcing it, so just Chris, just a little bit of Chris Dunn is fine. We'll go to Toronto. I think we'll be a little bit more interested in this one. As I said, Raptors, I believe, five-point favorites. Um... 110 implied total, which would be fifth. All right, so I'm digging Kyle Lowry. I don't even dislike DeMar either. And I'm particularly okay with Surge. So DeMar, 9,000 on FanDuel, 8,300 on DK. I'm going to say it, it's a full not fade for him. So here comes the 10-point outburst. What does he need to get to? You know, 45 or higher. I think he had a decent game his last time out. Oh, yeah, he had 74 fantasy points. I forgot about that. It's not bad. I, I was probably all over him. Um, wasn't super, wasn't playing super well before that. It's a really good game for them though. So he's a two for me. I think Kyle is going to be the same. He needs, you know, mid to low fours. I like them both there. I would probably want a little bit more Kyle than DeMar, but not by much. 
And then a Baca, 5,800 and 5,300. Can he get to 30? 39 in the last one. Three other 30-point games recently. Um, I think I like Surge more than both of them, if I'm being honest. But there's just a good team to stack, you know, good total. You want to have some of all of them. We're getting there, guys. Five more games. The monster, monster, monster video. Bucks hosting the Pacers. 109 implied total for the Bucks is seventh. Uh, Pacers still without Victor Oladipo. He's going to be a, a wowy guy for us here. I'm down with Giannis. Um, not super married to Middleton, but I'll take the peak. More interested in Bledsoe. Maybe Tony Snell. It'll be the first time I called Snell. Giannis, 11-3 and 10-6. So that's something to pay attention to. Especially with Noel Adipo. That's interesting. So he needs 60s, obviously. He has not been good lately. Last five games have all been in the mid fours or mid 40s, so to speak. And one game in the 30s. This feels like a game, this feels like a coming out party for Giannis out of that like yuck stretch. Right? Am I crazy? Why doesn't Giannis have a big game? Bledsoe, 7,100 and 7,200. I would not, I would prefer a different pricing there, but he needs high 40s, multiple 40 point games or 50 point games. Um, so I, I like Bledsoe here a lot as well. Middleton is 7,307,000. So he needs similar to uh, Bledsoe. He gets into that mid 30s range. I just don't see it totally popping for him tonight. I'm going to go a different direction. Brogdon is 4,800 and 4,800. Can you get to the mid 20s and higher? It's three straight games in the 20s, which isn't bad. Once the two into the 30s. It's probably not enough oomph for me. But I wouldn't mind having him in one or two lineups. And that'd be it. Although I need to look at Henson, I guess, on DK. 4,800 on DK. Can he get over 29? Usually in the mid 20s. I think he's worth a dart on DK. So then we're heading to the 830, the only 830 game. Nope. Then we're heading to the Pacers. Uh, 101 implied total, which is 21st on the night. And they aren't good. Oop, got to pause. I'm back. So let's grab the Pacers here, and then we'll see sort of how people are playing without Oladipo compared to with him. Hmm, okay. So maybe Bojan? Thad? I don't know. I'd like to see how they do without him. So switch this to the Pacers. And we'll see Old Adipo on. And we'll see Old Adipo off.
giant boost to performance to Lance. Also a pretty solid boost to Corey Joseph. Nothing really for Sabonis or Bojan or Collison or Thad. So let me just see if there's any value in Lance or Corey Joseph. But otherwise, it didn't seem like anything was crazy good for them. Um, I don't want any part of Turner. I don't really want any part of Lance, I guess. He needs like high 30s to be able to hit value. And he's Lance, so he could put up 12. It's not a, not a great matchup. I don't want, th I, I guess that on DK is worth a peak. 28, 30. <sighs> yeah, I don't really want anybody from Indiana. Corey Joseph, 28 minutes. He's at 4,000. Can you get to 25? Yeah, that's probably like the ceiling. So I'm good. Indiana's probably a fade. Mavs now uh, hosting the Warriors. 11 point underdogs at home. Or 10 point underdogs at home. Not very good. Uh, not the best game. Obviously, Curry is back. So the Warriors should smack them. Seth Curry, still not playing. So the Curry versus Curry matchup that everybody's just clamoring for, not happening. Uh, nothing popping off the page on DK. Unless you crazy people want to do some Harrison Barnes revenge game bull crap. 6,300 and 6,400. So he needs low to mid 30s. I'm okay there. Dennis Smith, 5,500 on FanDuel, 5,600 on DK. Does he go to 30? Two straight games have been pretty good. I don't think that uh, the Warriors are going to be the spot for him to have a coming out party. I'm okay not having any Dirk or JJ Barea. I don't. I don't really want any of these guys. So I'm gonna go to the Warriors. Warriors 112.25 implied total, which is second on the night. Nope, third on the night. Next team we look at is second. I'm really digging Durant. To a lesser extent, Clay. And a lot to Curry. Durant, 10 5 on FanDuel, 9,700 on DK. I can't even type Kevin Durant fast enough. Durant needs mid 50s for value. It's been down a little bit, but it's Kevin Durant against the Mavs. Um, love it. Curry, 98. Oh, people are going to chase the living shit out of Curry. 9,800 on FanDuel. 8,900 on DK. Uh, let's see. How well do you think Curry will play against J.J. Barea? At 47 fantasy points in 26 minutes. Oh my god, yeah. I haven't had to type in a while. Man, Curry looks great. And then Clay. 6,800 on FanDuel, 66 on DK. That's probably a little too costly. He would need to get to like 40 for it to be important. So I'm going to fade there, but... I'm going to have a lot of Durant and Curry. Um, okay. Next up is the Nuggets. Hosting the hapless Phoenix Suns. 114 implied total for the Nuggies. They are second on the night. So 
Let's lock and load there. I don't why did I paste that? Whatever, it worked. Okay. Um Oh, that's why it looks weird. It's not sorted. Much better. Gotta like it, Jokic. Looks great. The anticip I'm anticipating uh, Tyson Chandler sitting and Greg Monroe actually getting run, which would be good for Jokic. We need to look. We need to look at everybody here. This is a big one. Jokic, 9,900 on FanDuel, 9,000 on DK. Needs to get to 50. Um, this is an absolutely exceptional matchup. He should be the best player on the floor. I'm going to have a lot of Jokic. He's probably a tier one guy for me tonight. Murray, 7,300 on FanDuel, 67 on DK. He needs 40. He's been playing so much better lately. Three games above 40 in his last six. Um, you know, he'll have Tyler Eulis on him probably. Or uh, Devin Booker, who's arguably the worst shooting guard defender in the league. Um, so I like Murray a lot. I'm going to like... I'm going to have a ton of the Nuggets tonight. That's not how you spell Jamal, everybody. Will Barton, Gary Harris. Um, basically the same prices on both sites. Barton is $100 cheaper on FanDuel and $200 more expensive on DK. They both need to get to, let's just say, like 35 and higher. Uh, Harris has not really been there since he's come back or since he missed on the 20th. Barton has been a little bit better. Barton. Oh, God, I get these guys so confused in my brain from a fantasy perspective. Where you hide, little Barton? There you are. So Barton would get the second team. So he'd be getting like Troy Daniels. I'm going to say I like Barton as a two, Gary Harris as a three, and then Trey Lyles, 6,300 on FanDuel, 5,100 on DK. I just, wow, I don't get it. Anything above 30 is great. He's done that in his last two. Um, really high floor lately. It's a not the best matchup for Lyles. But the game itself is good. So I don't mind having a little bit of him. But again, he's going to be a lower tier guy now just because of the matchup. And that's, I don't really want him on FanDuel. So I'm going to say Trey Lyles is DK only for me. And then Wilson Chandler is 5,100 and 4,700. He needs 30. Um, this is strictly because of the game and the matchup. You're going to want a lot of Denver. Like a lot, a lot. Phoenix Suns. thought there were two games left. Um, let's see. Booker played 40-something minutes and went, had himself a game last night. TJ Warren played well, which I wasn't on. I'll take that look at Warren. Um, I'll take a look at Chris, who's been playing well. Got to look at Monroe if you think if we're, if we confirm that he's playing at least. Suns. One hundred three implied total, which is eighteenth. This video is so damn long. All right, Booker, seventy eight hundred on Fanduel, eighty four hundred on DK. Uh, he needs two different scoring amounts to be worth it. Um, I won't, I won't have him on DK. Actually, that that's that's silly to say. He's he's a tier two guy on Fanduel and a tier three guy on DK. So I'm marking that down. But he's he's better on Fanduel by a lot than DK. 
Warren, 7,500 and 6,400. So Warren's the opposite. I am going to like some TJ Warren tonight. He needs like high 30s. Three straight games, really. Yeah, I, I really like TJ Warren tonight. Uh, he's a two for me on DK and a three for me on FanDuel. So they're flip flopped. Um, Len, 5,300 and 4,600. I'm going to prefer to look at Monroe at 4,500 on DK. If we get news that he's playing, um, he's a two for me. Marquise Chris, 5,000 and 4,600, mid 20s. Um, he had 38 fantasy points last night. He's had basically 25 or higher in his last five. Been playing really well. I will go with a little bit of Marquise Chris. Two games left. Utah Jazz and Pelicans, Lakers and Thunder, all four of them not uh, particularly snazzy games. Just so happens that the Pelicans and the Thunder have uh, major, major players. So Jazz, 106 implied total, which is 12th. I don't anticipate wanting anything here. Okay, got to look at Mitchell, got to look at Tabo. I forgot about Tabo. Mitchell is 7,800 on FanDuel, 7,300 on DK. Needs over 40. Um, you know, had a 50-pointer in his most recent game. Uh, you know, you got you to be paying attention to him. You know, he's probably a two, actually. With no Roberson, I like Mitchell a little bit more. Favors, 6,000, 6,400. He needs mid to high 30s. Three straight games in the 30s, which is great. Um, but this isn't a game for favors, in my opinion. Hood, 5,600 and 5,500. He has the ability to go off, but I don't like the matchup, really. I guess, I mean, it's not horrible, but it's not some, like, up and down game. No thanks on Rubio or Ingles. Cephalosha, 4,700 on FanDuel, 3,900 on D. DK, uh, if you think that he's going to play like 27 minutes or higher, I think Tabo is in a really nice spot. He's played big minutes in the last two since he's been back, over 30. He's had 29-point you know, games, so he's a two if you think that continues, especially on DK. FanDuel, he's probably a three. Now we want to go to the Pels. Wait, uh, did I screw that up in my head? I did. I caught it. I caught it. So ignore Roberson being out. That's the next game. Um, doesn't change anything for Mitchell for me. He's, uh, you know, I'm not really worried about Eton Moore or Rondo or Jameer guarding him. So no changes for Mitchell or Tabo. Just ignore everything that I said about it. <laughs> now we'll look at the Pelicans themselves. I assume we're going to be looking at one of Boogie or AD. Preferably one or the other. AD it is. And I think Drew's worth a look. Boogie, 12,000 on FanDuel, 10-5 on DK. I don't... I don't see the need on uh, FanDuel to play him. There's too much other good stuff out there. So I'd say on DK, he's a 4 for me. Anthony Davis, on the other hand, 10-9 on FanDuel, 9-9 on DK. I, I mean, I, I love it. He's a two for me, maybe even a one. 
And then Drew is 6,900 and 6,800. So can we get to like high 30s, low 40s? Not playing as well lately. I'm not going to force it against the Jazz. Not the best total either. Final game. Lakers hosting the Thunder. Lakers um, going to be underdogs at home. This is a made-up line. The anticipation is that Lonzo is back and that Brooke Lopez is back. So... It's going to be interesting seeing how those minutes shake out. It's probably going to be almost no Josh Hart. And the, the backcourt minutes should be normal. KCP is playing. Uh, since this game is in the state of California, he's allowed to actually play in it. Um, but Randall is something somebody we want to keep an eye on. I copied the wrong table, which is great. I'm, I'm not meant to be talking for over an hour. Okay, there we go. Uh, um, we want that to say OKC. Okay, like, okay, we'll look at the coups. We actually will look at Lonzo, but I can't imagine it. KCP is probably going to be the only play here that I like. So Lonzo, seventy-seven hundred and sixty-seven hundred. Um. He's a four for me and probably only on DK. Kuzma, 6,100 and 6,700. He's dinged up. I'd probably only want him on FanDuel. And he's a three to me. No sign. I don't want Clarkson now. Um, obviously, this could change if Ball or Lopez are ruled out. Um, this doesn't feel like a great... Ingram game. Julius Randle is 6,900 on FanDuel. That's a no play. He's 5,700 on DK. Um, I won't totally disregard him here, but DK only in a four. KCP, 6,100 FanDuel, 5,100 DK. That's one we need to look at. Um, he basically needs 30 for value. He can get there. He's a DK only three for me. Finally, to OKC we go. I'm out of coffee. Ooh, I'm not out of coffee. Thought I was out of coffee. You know how depressing that is? All right, love Russ and Stephen Adams. Maybe Paul George. Russ twelve three on Fanduel, ten seven on DK or eleven seven on DK. Oh, Nelly, in LA though. Um, I mean, you, I like him. I don't think that he's going to show up at all in an optimization on DK. On FanDuel, I wouldn't say the same. I think that he'll definitely be in play. Um, but I think I'd prefer Chris Paul just because of price. He's a, uh, he's a three for me. It's uh, Look, he's going to have a big game. His price is prohibitively expensive. Paul George, 8,400 on FanDuel, 7,600 on DK. Um, he needs to get to like mid to low fours or forties. I like that a lot more, especially, you know, since he might be there next year, <laughs> I'm good on mellow. And then Steven Adams, 6,700 and 6,300. So he needs mid thirties, uh, had a couple like that earlier in this two week stretch so i will entertain that uh, but he's he's lower tier for me and that's it so what i want to do is just show you sort of how that shakes out then because it's going to be a big list Mo like monster but we're still missing out on you know simmons love draymond horford middleton I'm, I'm cutting some of the some of the big stuff away but right here we would be looking at the 
the bulk of my lineups will be some rotation of Paul, Jokic, and Butler in big numbers. And then, you know, large chunks of some of these lower salary guys as filler. Little bits up here, you know, more in this mid-range. I'll be okay if guys down here pop up, but I don't expect to have a ton of any of these guys down here. Maybe one or two lineups in this section, maybe like three or four in this section. That's the goal, at least. I think this is a good way to look at it. It's easier to look at this on FanDuel because of the way the positions work, but I think Chris Paul is far and away the best play of point guard. Uh, that Everyone's going to have that same take. I think there's a decent chunk of this middle tier of uh, point guards. So, you know, everybody's here, and you can you can move around in that tier accordingly. We'll see. There's a new, new, new thought process. We're going to look at DK first. This is going to be so slow. There's so many guys. Then we got to get out of here because I got stuff to do. Um, oh my god, this is just such a giant slate. Fantasy Cruncher is grinding to all 5,000 or 5%. No, it's 6%, but whatever. Doesn't matter. And at the very least, let's filter out guys with a projected score less than 10. That'll cut 100 out of here. So, 10 lineups on fantasy for my projections. Let's see what we get. A lot of Donovan Mitchell, a lot of Greg Monroe, a lot of Trey Lyles. Decent chunk of Whiteside, which is expected on DK. But there's Jokic, there's DeRozan. I have, you know, all of these guys are going to be in a large chunk of my lineups. If I look back at this now. Didn't get any Chris Paul, which is interesting. Um, I'll have to look into that. It might just be a price problem. Jokic, though, 50% of these this first group of lineups, that's probably where he's going to be for me. And then Jimmy Butler, no sign of him in the optimization. So no sign of Butler, no sign of Paul, which I think is interesting. A lot more DeRozan. So this is saying... DeRozan over Butler, and I'm not sure I agree there. So, something to think about there. But, I mean, I'm going to end up loving every lineup. When there's 12 games, you should end up with a lot of guys you like. But that DeRozan over Butler, um, that'll, that'll be the interesting look for me. Now we'll take a look at FanDuel. Come on. Guess not. There we go. Now we're dancing. Apologies for the length of this video, but if I'm going to talk about a 12 game slate, it's going to take some time. Five minutes a game is an hour, and I should probably spend more than five minutes on each game. What I should really do on big slates is, like, prepare <laughs> before I'm about to do this. I really only talk about the stuff I like, but I can't, you know, where's the fun in that? I like the off-the-cuff. Um, you guys are getting, like, the first look I'm taking at a slate. That's important. There's no BS in here. All right, 10 FanDuel lineups. This I'm actually interested in. Yeah, a lot of rust, which I expected. I'm going to present that a little bit differently here. move position under short list yeah that's much better so like i said i like paul he shows up a little bit but westbrook is just showing up big time on FanDuel, which i'm not surprised by uh, just because he's he's that much of a higher level than paul it's just so much more expensive um, i think splitting those guys on FanDuel is a good good idea 
Um, then we get a lot of Dennis Smith Jr., which I don't necessarily agree with. Some Dinwiddie, which is okay. But Curry, Payton, Lowry, Murray, Bledsoe was the rest of that short list. Is that refreshed? Yeah. Only Bledsoe really showing up. So that's, you know, something to keep in mind. Shooting guard. A lot of Donovan Mitchell. Makes sense. He's in my tier two. Um, no DeRozan. A lot of Booker, which, again, doesn't surprise me. Um, not showing up here. i got to change the formula. But Booker is a tier two shooting guard for me um, because of his price on FanDuel. That all looks normal. Small forward. I have Butler a lot. Not showing up again, so I really need to dig into Jimmy Butler today. But Braun and Giannis also not showing up here. That I'm not surprised by. I'm only doing 10 lineups, and they're making the play on Westbrook. And at that point, you're out of salary. Um, George, Warren, and Tabo. No Tabo there is really weird to me. But okay. And TJ Warren is actually a tier 3 uh, fan duel guy. Kuzma is at the power forward spot. I've got him as a tier three guy. Markinen and Jason Tatum. Um, so Tatum is a tier three guy for me. A lot of differentiation on FanDuel. And then at center, it's Brooke Lopez and Monroe. I've got Monroe. I don't have Brooke Lopez and I won't have Brooke Lopez. Um, that actually is probably going to change a bunch of stuff. Full, almost fully Greg Monroe. Oh, there's Paul George. But, alrighty guys. I think that's it. Those are fun lineups. It's going to be a fun night. Um, as I said, I will be back live before lock tonight, starting at 6 o'clock. Barring weather. Um, cross your fingers that I have power. Other than that, that's it for me, guys. Like, subscribe. Patreon, Twitter, Reddit, you guys know it all. Um, I'll see you guys tonight. Bye-bye.